Hello and welcome to the Lucian video tutorial series. In this video we'll be going over scanners and common scanning problems and how to fix them. But before we get into that, let's pause and have a word about scanning drivers. Now no scanning application like File Center is able to directly control any scanner. And the reason for this is there are so many different kinds of scanners, every one of them with its own unique language, its own commands, and its own idiosyncrasies it wouldn't be feasible for any piece of software to understand how to talk to all of them. As a result, it's the responsibility of the scanner maker to provide a specialized program that controls the scanner. And this program is referred to as the driver or the Twain driver. What happens is File Center makes requests into this driver, this specialized program, and the driver then controls the scanner, performs the scan, and then hands back an image to the requesting program. As a result, when you see scanning problems, far, far, far more often than not, the problem is with your scanner driver. File Center is simply making requests into the driver and then receiving pages back. Now, later on in this video, we're going to go over how to update your driver so that you make sure that it has the latest bug fixes. But in the meantime, let's look at a few ways that File Center is sometimes able to work around problems with scanner drivers. Now the settings we're going to use to adjust the way File Center interacts with your Twain driver are all found right here on the scan dialog. In fact, it's these three settings right here that we're going to be working with. First, let's look at the scanner option. Now this shows the scanner that's currently selected. I can click this button right here to see a list of all of the scanners on my machine, but that's not actually correct. This is actually a list of all of the Twain drivers that Windows has found on the machine. This dialog is coming straight from Windows. Now if your scanner isn't showing up on this list, it's because your scanner hasn't provided a Twain driver and you're going to need to go and try to find one. A very common situation is when a scanner shows up more than once on this list. For example, my scanner is showing up twice. When this happens, you usually want to select the one that does not have the WIA in front of it. This is the driver that was provided directly from the manufacturer. This is one that Windows has automatically generated, the WIA one. Typically, this is the better one to select. But with that said, there are scanners that sometimes seem to work better with the WIA driver selected. So don't be afraid to try that if you need to, but try this one first. The next setting that we're going to play with is right here. Use Scanner Dialog. Now, especially if you've selected a WIA driver for your scanner up here, one that begins with WIA, you'll definitely want to select this option right here. But it's a great one to play with regardless. What this setting does is, when I click Start Scan, this is going to pop up my scanner's native interface. By that, I mean this dialog that I'm seeing right here of options, this is coming straight from the Twain driver. This isn't in File Center at all. There are some scanners that are very, very finicky about you scanning through this interface. So often, displaying this is going to give you good results. Now, if you find that you are getting good results through that, then what you'll want to do is come back here, select that option, and then click Save right here. And that will make it so that this will be your default from this time forward every time that you scan. Next, let's turn our attention to the mode and transfer settings. Now, the mode is different ways that File Center can communicate with your Twain driver, different communication methods. And this is typically the setting that's going to produce uh, the best results for you if you're having problems. What you need to do is go through and try each one of these different modes. Try a scan on each one of the modes. And you may find that one of those modes works where the others don't. And one, uh, one word of caution in regards to this, if you're getting errors that the scanner is busy or if you get a crash, you're usually going to have to pause and reboot your computer, turn off your scanner and turn your scanner back on uh, before you proceed and try some of the other modes. Because with these Twain drivers, uh, once they lock up, they're typically not going to unlock without a reboot on your computer. Now the transfer mode doesn't need to be changed as often 
but for some scanners it does make a difference. The transfer mode is different ways of receiving the scanned image back from the scanner. If you're having problems with that, then you going, you'll want to go through and try each one of the transfer modes. In fact, you'll probably need to go through and try each of the transfer modes uh, with each one of these modes. So select mode to A, and then try each of the transfer options. Set the mode to B, try each one of the transfer options. And somewhere in that combination, you'll probably find something that works for your scanner. Now let's go over a few common problems and the solutions to them. One problem that we see from time to time, we'll see a scanner that produces inverted images, in other words, negatives almost. Uh, the page is black with white text on it. If your scanner is doing this, the setting to use is right here, invert pages. That'll flip it back to where it looks normal again. Then you'll want to click the save option to make that a permanent setting. Another scenario that we hear of from time to time is users with sheet-fed scanners that can pull through uh, one page after another. They'll get one page that will come through fine, but the rest of the pages will be blank. We especially see this with multifunction scanners. The setting that seems to make a difference there is use scanner dialog to pop up the native interface and then scan through the native interface. Sometimes you'll need to do that in conjunction with selecting the WIA option for your scanner. So play with those settings and you should be able to find something that fixes that problem. Also occasionally we hear about users with scanners that can do double-sided scanning uh, not being able to get double-sided scanning working. This is a setting right here that handles double-sided scanning known as duplex scanning. Sometimes these scanners uh, work in reverse uh, so if you deselect duplex scanning you get it if you select duplex scanning, then it turns it off. Play with that a little bit and see what works. And also, selecting Use Scanner Dialog can sometimes take care of those situations. Now, if you've gotten this far in the video and you're still having problems with your scanner, let us first recommend that you try plugging your scanner into a different USB port on your computer, or even swapping out the USB cable. We're always surprised how often this ends up fixing the problem. But at the end of the day, what you may need to do is update your scanner driver. Now, as we said before, a scanner driver really in a lot of ways is like a program. And in fact, you will remove and install it like you would any other program. So your first step is going to be to uninstall the old driver. Now, here we've gone to the uh, control panel in Windows. On newer versions of Windows, the place you're going is programs and features. Uh, some of your older versions of Windows, like Windows XP, you'll find it under Add Remove Programs. It's going to give you a list of all the programs installed on your computer, and right here at the end of the list is the driver for my scanner. So I can click Uninstall right here, and that will uninstall and remove the driver. Once I've done that, the next thing I need to do is go out to the website of my scanner manufacturer and download a new driver. We'll show how to do that in the case of a uh, Xerox scanner, which is what we have installed here on the machine. Once I've come to the Xerox website, and all scanner, ma scanner manufacturers handle this in a similar way, there will be a link for support and drivers, or maybe just drivers and downloads. I'm going to come here and select scanners, and I know what model my scanner is. I'm going to select the drivers and downloads. Then there will be some point where you need to select your exact scanner model. There's mine right there. And now it shows all of the different options and manuals and things like that available for my scanner. I'm looking here for a driver for my scanner. Now here's where you need to be careful because there are different versions of Windows like Windows uh, XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, and there are different editions of Windows. This is going to be 32-bit or 64-bit. Now in the case of Xerox, uh, there's, there's no difference between the two. I can just come here and select my driver and download it. But you need to be careful because sometimes there will be a different driver for 32-bit or 64-bit editions of Windows and different drivers for different versions of Windows. You've got to match the driver to your version of Windows and your edition of Windows.
If you've got a newer version of Windows, it's probably, or I should say a newer computer, it's probably 64-bit. If you've got an older computer, it's probably 32-bit. Uh, but make sure that you get that right or the driver is not going to work. Once you've decided which driver you need to download, go ahead and click it, download it, and then install it just like you would any other program. And the driver will then walk you through possibly connecting your scanner and getting everything going again. Once you've got a new driver on your machine, hopefully that was the last step you needed in order to get your scanner working great with File Center.